hello and welcome to the part 18.5 of my 2024 f1 season simulation if you missed part 18 make sure to check that one out uh, before watching this video obviously this is a recap of the first 18 races that i'm going to i'm doing after every six races of the season so the last one is going to be after the season ends uh or the simulation ends however you want to call it anyways so uh, yeah first 18 races uh, regarding to the last six races of the simulation the winter testing is also like week away preseason pre testing is always exciting there's also dts coming out there's a lot of new things that i want to finish this simulation before so let's get into it uh first 18 races let's recap the road jar championship so far so we have max Verstappen leading the way on 280 points Three victories, 11 podiums, 7 pole positions, and 9 fastest laps. Leading in pretty much everything but wins. Uh, wins are pretty much uh, equal between the three drivers with or from four different teams. That's very exciting. Um, unfortunately, Max is just very, very consistent. Uh, as we can see in the podiums, uh, podium number especially, um, that Max just is always up there every single weekend pretty much. Um, with the drivers somehow sometimes having the other, other other drivers and other teams sometimes having an off weekend sometimes having a very good weekend where they can be the red bull car essentially so this this simulation is pretty much like if it's last season but red bull is like way way less uh dominant pretty much like not not as not uh, pretty much not dominant at all maybe even yeah it's the best car but if there are so many instances where another team was as quick or even quicker than Red Bull, uh, it's really difficult to say. I would still say that Red Bull has been the best, the best car over the entire season as it was on paper. Obviously, the tracks are a different thing and uh, driver lineup of Red Bull is not ideal as well as we have, obviously, Perez and P8 in championship. Uh, moving on to the Charles Leclerc in second place. 208 points, 4 victories, 4 podiums, 2 poles, and 4 fastest laps. Charles is having a good season. Uh, it's not like uh, the best season ever, but I mean, yeah, having Ferrari, uh, I think it's P3 in the constructors right now. They should be just behind McLaren at this point. They're, uh, so P3 in the constructors, second in the drivers, that's very good for Charles. Uh, even though the position gap to signs is humongous, it's like eight positions or seven actually. Um, signs has not been doing too bad himself. Uh, he also has a victory, five podiums and a pole position as well. So not a bad season from Signs, who has more podiums than Charles, but Leclerc has those better performances uh, and essentially higher ceiling and a better consistency seemingly as well as we'll see in the head to heads as well next up alonso 202 points three victories six podiums three pole positions and two fastest laps we get to the, another instance of a very unequal dry lineup just like red bull where alonso is doing very well uh pretty much carrying the team's chances of a constructor stop or finish uh as mercedes are a bit ahead as of this moment Scholl has a lot of uh, has had a lot of uh, bad performances but also had some performances where he literally uh, beat alonso fair and square but those come so so rarely that the, the gap is just so big pretty much as last season um and exactly know the amount of points stroll got but i think this the points that alonso has right now 202 points is pretty similar to what he ended up with at the end of the season in 2023 um i think stroll had around 87 as well i may be wrong um you can correct me in the comments down below if you want to obviously um uh, yeah aston martin has been a great car uh maybe over the entire season could be even the second best of uh, it's really hard to tell at, at points it was just every single team uh behind red bull like changing uh, I mean, from the top four teams, changing as the second best team over the entire season. Um, it's very difficult to say as of this moment. Uh, you could argue for every single car, maybe except Mercedes, as uh, they seem to be 
the slowest uh, over the entire season out of the four top teams behind Red Bull. Um, yeah, McLaren, uh, I mentioned that early, earlier just now, uh, P4 and P5 for Norris and Piastri, very close in points, very close in head to heads, uh, as we saw in the last few recaps. And this one is going to be pretty much the same thing. Uh, Norris just just beating Piastri, but it's not like beating, beating, but it's, uh, I don't want to use the word edging, but it's just uh, I think, uh, the word I thought of. Basically, uh, just a tiny bit uh, better than Piastri at, as of this moment. Uh, Piastri having more pole positions is an interesting statistic. Uh, not that anyone would have expected, probably. Uh, getting to the Mercedes, which is a uh, very close lineup as well, even though Russell is ahead of Hamilton right now. The head to heads will show that it's a, been an extremely uh, close season, and uh, Russell, the, the, the reason Russell is uh, far, not far, is ahead in the points and has much, much, many more podiums is because the Mercedes has been way stronger during the early part of the season, and that's where Russell was outperforming Hamilton. But as uh, later, Mercedes became uh, way less consistent and way uh, not slower. I right? just overall not having as much pace as the other four teams uh, at the top uh, just kind of fell. And that's where Hamilton started outperforming Russell. And uh, since the points given uh, in the lower positions are obviously smaller, Hamilton is still uh, behind Russell. Even though uh, statistically they should be very very much equal uh, in that regard, uh, Perez being the championship uh, mentioned Max one forty eight uh, sorry one forty six points a victory and four podiums a victory coming off the crazy Baku race that I still don't really know how Perez won but whatever uh, good for him I guess uh, four podiums yeah having. Having kind of pretty much the same season as last year, except that Red Bull is now just not dominant, not a dominant car. It's pretty much a, another top team with being just just about the best car out of the five teams. As we can see, uh, Perez is just not matching it well, and uh, Norman as well as Max, as obviously we saw last season. Uh, what can happen whenever uh, the teams close the gap to Red Bull is Perez not being P2 in the championship, and yeah, it's P8. This is quite a way off. P2. Uh, Science, P9, 145 points, a victory, five podiums, and a pole position. Science, even though the gap to Leclerc is, uh, looks like uh, really, really big, I, I don't want to, I want to like uh, exaggerate it, but it looks, looks big. But as we can, as we will see in the head to heads, uh, especially after the two fast, uh, sorry, after, sorry, after our first 12 races, the recap, the uh, red Ferraris were, 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 were equal. Maybe Charles getting the upper hand recently, but Sainz is still doing very well in that Ferrari, just not represented in the points themselves, seemingly. Uh, P10 for Stroll, 87 points, two podiums. Uh, yeah, Stroll far behind Alonso, uh, pretty much the same situation as Perez, but the Stop Marion has been. Uh, slower car than Red Bull for the entire season, and way less consistent as well. And Stroll, I mean, he's probably the worst driver out of the top ten uh, teams drivers. Uh, sorry, top top five teams drivers. Uh, just uh, confusing myself even more. <laughs> P11 for Sonoda. We get to the bottom five teams essentially. Just uh, the the backing order is just played in the. Top five and bottom five at this point. Uh, 52 points for the racing balls driver. No podiums and no, nothing pretty much. Uh, and I think pretty much ever since like this ninth race of the season or whatever, it just he got to the P11 uh, and just and has been has been not getting no not many points ever since. Uh, the Alpines have been closing closing in, but it's very difficult to jump uh, to know that at this point since. Even though the Alpines have shown great pace over the past few races, especially in Singapore, as uh, no spoilers, uh, but they did pr pretty well. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gasly, uh, Ocon are B12, B13, Gasly beating Ocon and having a podium as well. Um, 
pretty much a reflection of last season, despite, uh, uh, but more enhanced as the gap uh, for Auckland and Gasly is even bigger this time. Which kind of makes sense because uh, last season Gasly just came into the Alpine, uh, the team that Auckland was at like for three seasons before that. And Gasly just straight up beat him, even though it was very close, uh, still beat Ocon. And here, uh, especially in, in head to heads, it looks like Gasly ha is having uh, a bigger gap to uh, Ocon. I can't just jump into the, <laughs> to the table. It's the, the survey, uh, we'll, we'll handle it. Uh, Albon P13, uh, 19 points in the podium. Yeah, uh, not very good season from Williams, even though they have, uh, I'm pretty sure they have more points than last season already. But it seems like they they have just those random moments where they score points. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like, they think it's crazy races to score any points as they're, sorry, as they're behind uh, seven teams a half ahead. Basically, it's like the top five teams, Racing Bulls and Alpines next to each other. They're just the bottom three teams with Williams having the edge. On Haas and Sauber. Um, Haas, 15, B15, Hulkenberg with 18 points and a victory. Oh, sorry, it's a podium. Yeah, Hulkenberg podium. Uh, you, you will need to watch the last race to, <laughs> to see just what just happened in Singapore because that was a crazy one. Yeah, Hulkenberg podium. First podium for Haas, first podium for, his, uh, for him in his career. Uh, crazy stuff, but. Obviously not the greatest season for Haas anyway. Um, just 19 points on the board. It's, which is more than last season, but still way, way off their optimal target, I would say. Uh, their P9 constructors right now are uh, quite a way behind Williams. This is not something they can probably overcome as they only can go down unless uh, Sauber just decides to not score, not score any more points in the last six races. Uh, Sergeant P16, 14 points. I would point out that Sergeant has been doing much, much better in the recent uh, recent races. Uh, the first first quarter or the first third of the season, it looked like pretty much the last season for Sergeant. Uh, the gap to Alban was very big. But recently, it's, it's, it's been getting very, very close. Uh, Sergeant has been beating Alban at times. Uh, as we get especially to the race head to head, it's looking very closer than you would expect. Um, Ricardo P17, 14 points. Um, this is pretty much the same situation as Hamilton at Mercedes. Uh, Sunoda has been getting the points early in the season and then just after the car has not been as competitive, uh, that Ricardo started, started to be the better driver, which is weird. Like, we have two instances of this. And, uh, as we'll get to the head to heads, it's been very close and could even argue that Ricardo has been the better driver over the entire season, even if the points are so much in favor for Sonoda. Um, this is why it's like that is are very important whenever comparing driver seasons in this in this scenario. P18 for Bottas with five points. Uh, good season for Bottas. Nothing really much you can do in the Sauber car, which is over the, over the entire season the slowest car on the grid. Um, Magnussen P19, one point. Yeah, at least that one point from Singapore is the saving grace from not being P20 in the championship. Uh, and Guanyu Zhou, zero points. Yep. Slowest car on the grid. And, uh, I mean, Zhou is a, is a good driver, but by no means uh, an elite. So you could argue that uh, those, those zero points are probably merited um, on, in the slowest car on the grid, obviously. It's very difficult to score points in the Sauber car. I'm pretty sure Bottas has scored on like, only like two occasions, or maybe three maximum. Uh, Haas has also scored like on like... Magnussen scored on one occasion. Hulkenberg scored like on three or four, uh, thanks to basically his, his qualifyings mainly. Uh, random crazy races, especially in the, that one in Singapore. Um, yeah. That's a drive championship. Let's look at evolution, because... Uh, over the last six races, nothing really much has changed in terms of like interesting battles. Uh, Max has been pretty much escaping with the championship. Uh, the gap ever since like Austria has only been getting bigger, uh, apart from Netherlands, where Max unfortunately DNF from the lead 
due to uh, an energy failure. So uh, the gap closed a tiny little bit, but we, we knew that Max would probably win the championship anyway uh, with, a, with a big margin as well. Charles just got uh, back into the P10 the championship uh, the first time since like Saudi Arabia, maybe. Yeah, it's probably it seems like Saudi Arabia because uh, the Ferrari kind of dropped in the middle of the season. Uh, but then uh, in this third quarter of the season, the Ferrari has been very, very good. Uh, and yeah, uh, they he jumped Alonso, who, I mean, Aston Martin hasn't been doing the greatest in this third uh, quarter of the season. Uh, pretty much the opposite of Ferrari. Just like going down and Ferrari going up. Yeah. Um, McLaren's pretty much what you would expect, except Norris that uh, had a very good uh, bunch of races uh, from Spain to like Netherlands, where he jumped Piastri and now uh, is maintaining the lead over Piastri, but it's very close between them. Oh uh, yeah, well uh, yeah, basically what did you, what do you want to see from Hamilton? Uh, very consistent for the entire season, but Russell has been the better driver at the start of the season, where the car was uh, better. Uh, compared to the rest of the grid, so that's where the points came from. Uh, as you can see, Hamilton has been getting uh, pretty much the same amount of points for, for the entire season, uh, which just tells you that he's been becoming better over the entire season as the Mercedes car has been becoming worse, and he's maintaining the consistency. Uh, and that victory in Singapore obviously helped uh, with a big jump now to Perez and Science level. Those two drivers, uh, I don't really think they can jump much higher. They can overtake Hamilton, uh, re-overtake re Hamilton, or maybe even Russell, but I don't think they can challenge for the top five in the championship as of this moment. Yeah, then you get the Stroll, who is in like, the biggest no-man's land ever. Like, it's such a huge gap behind him and ahead of him. Basically, the slowest driver out of the drivers in the top five teams. And it just shows. So, no doubt, yeah, pretty much what I mentioned, uh, only two point scoring occasions ever since Miami. And uh, Ricardo has been getting more points finishes, but just not enough as the car is just not as good as it had been um, at the start of the season. Alpines, um, yeah, they, they got a lot of upgrade packages for the middle of the season, which made them uh, occasionally drop into the top 10, uh, not drawback. Jump into the top 10, I should say. Um, where they started getting points and more points, and now most recently Singapore, their first podium of the season as well. Um, very good for Malpine. Um, they are currently in pieces in the constructors. They're probably not, not probably, they're definitely not going to jump any teams up ahead, but I think they can, they can um, pretty confidently uh, secure that P6 in the constructors. Oh uh, yeah, that's Dennis Albon who, yeah, <laughs> scored the points in Saudi Arabia. Then scored like one point uh, in the middle, middle of the season, and now just yeah, not being able to score points because the Williams is not a great car. Uh, even though Sargent has been getting points recently, just mainly due to the crazy races, especially in uh, Azerbaijan, which was one hell of a crazy race. Oh, um, but they had two crazy races. Uh, in a row, which is so uh, interesting. Yeah, next up is the Austin Austin Sprint, so they could be interesting as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh Ricardo, yeah, pretty much what I what I mentioned earlier. Uh Hulkenberg dropping just behind Alban next to the podium, but you know, not really much you can do in the has. Uh Bottas not in points pretty much uh, ever since Imola. I think there was only maybe one points finish. Uh Renault as uh Magnussen got at like one point, and just just barely you can see it in the Singapore that he jumped um, ahead of Joe, who has not scored points in the entire season. Yeah, let's get into the constructors. Uh, Red Bull leading the way by quite a big uh, amount of points, 40, 426 points, four victories, uh, 15 podiums, sample positions, nine fastest laps. And my cat is really, really uh, requesting attention right now, which is not the best timing. 363 points for McLaren. <laughs> five victories, 10 podiums, five pole position, two fastest lap. I kind of mentioned already, uh, I mentioned the teams already and how the season went 
whenever I talk about the drivers, so I can just run through the constructors. 353 points for Ferrari in P3, four victories, nine podiums, three all positions and why is my cat dropping on my computer? Uh, three all positions, four battles left. Four, four plays Mercedes, 313 points. Please don't. Uh, uh, <laughs> two injuries, nine points, uh, fastest lap. Uh, yeah, my cat is using my room as, uh, as a playing ground right now. It's not the ideal situation. Sorry, <laughs> 289 points for Aston Martin in P5. Three victories, eight podiums, three pole positions, and two fastest laps. And it's Alpine, 77 points, a bit of a podium. 66 points for a Racing Bulls team in P7. Uh, P8 for Williams, 33 points on the podium. P9 for Haas, 19 points on the podium. And P10 for Sauber, all five points. Uh, the evolution of constructors looks like this. Uh, I don't really know what to point out. Maybe the big uh, improvement from Ferrari in the past few races where they really, really closed the gap to McLaren. Uh, McLaren looked like they could challenge Red Bull, but then just a really bad sequence of races happened. And uh, unfortunately for McLaren, they seem to, I don't think they will be able to challenge Red Bull for the constructors anymore, uh, as the Ferrari is very close behind them and they should probably look behind them more than ahead of them. Mercedes jumped Aston Martin recently, that is mostly due to Aston Martin uh, dropping in pace pretty much to Mercedes level, but except that Stroll is just not scoring points anymore. Uh, which happened to uh, Stroll scored points in the middle of the part of the season, but now just stopped as uh, even though Singapore was a good race for Stroll, just uh, the races before that just weren't good. Mercedes jumped ahead, but this could be still doable. Maybe even Mercedes can jump McLaren if they really have a good sequence of races, but they would need like three Singapore's in a row probably. Um, the Alpine jumped, uh, jumped racing bulls, which is somehow still alpha Terry in this in this graphic. Uh, yep, yeah, um, pretty much, pretty much settled there. Unless those two teams can bring some upgrade packages, which can jump them uh, into the top ten back again, or. Or, <laughs> or in a crazy race where uh, a racing bulls team can score some good points. Williams in P8. Um, yeah, pretty much. No, no much. No, not much to say there. Has P9 jump. Sauber in Singapore pretty much settled for P9 in the constructors. Uh, Sauber is settled for P10 pretty much as of this moment. So the only close battles are like for P2, P4, and P6, unless. Uh, we don't think those teams are going to score many more points. Which, right now, it looks like uh, the Alpine car is better than the Alpha Tauri car. Oh, sorry, uh, Racing Bulls car. So, maybe maybe Alpha Tauri can break some upgrades. I don't know. Uh, depends. Uh, it's, it's the end part of the season anyway. Yeah. Teams don't really bring too many points at this, at this point. Uh, as a lot of teams already switched to next year. Um, head to heads. Uh, I don't really want to go into detail as much as I did last time. Um, this it was very exhausting, and uh, the video got like over an hour uh, of footage. So I'll just try to briefly go through them. Max Verstappen leading the way and in qualifying at heads by by a big margin, and the average qualifying uh, or qualifying position uh, quite a way ahead of Perez. What do you expect? Uh, race head to head, pretty much the same thing. Uh, not too much to say, pretty much the same scenario as last year. Mercedes, very close, uh, that's what I want to mention, even though Russell is ahead, of in, po uh, ahead in points, uh, the gap is very close in head-to-heads. Uh, looks like, yep, oh, you, you couldn't separate these drivers, they're very, very close to each other, even though uh, the averages are just a bit in favor of Russell, uh, the head-to-heads are pretty much equal, so... Uh, very close travel lineup here. Aston Martin, on the other hand, uh, the opposite of a, of a close travel lineup. A stroll lacking in the both uh, head to heads and average qualifyings. Just a horrible season from stroll once again. Ferraris, uh, very, very close. Uh, not as close as Mercedes. Charles Leclerc has been having the, having the edge on Carl Sainz uh, recently. 
especially in uh, uh, especially in the last few races uh, where Charles Leclerc got a lot of points and uh, some victories as well. Yeah, uh, they had to look more on Carl Sainz's side for the for the early parts of the season, but now Charles uh, over the entire season is able to prove that he's the better driver at Ferrari. Uh, Alpine. Yeah, uh, the head to heads I think looks scarier before before this had uh, before this recap. Um, like the, in the in the second recap, for example, Gasly had uh, a lot of a lot of pace on Ocon, but here it looks like they they just closed the gap, and it looks like it's getting much much closer. But still, Gasly, uh, especially in race head to heads, thirteen to five, it's it's a uh, it's a big a big big gap. Uh, McLaren, so uh, they were <laughs> they were kind of a meme in the first two recaps, but pretty much having the same statistics uh, <laughs> in every single thing, pretty much. And here it's it's no different. Uh, the the biggest gap is like a sprint every sprint qualifying position, and it's like zero point seven. Uh, the head to heads are in favor of Norris by just a bit in both cases, but it's not like uh, uh, it's showing too much as, for example. Piastri losing the qualifying head to head, but he's having a bit better average qualifying position uh, in the race head to head. So, yeah, it's uh, it's in favor of Norris just by just a bit, but that's what you expect based on last season at least. Uh, Piastri will be improved, but Norris still being a better driver in the races by a tiny bit. Uh, Haas, uh, Haas is pretty much the same thing as Aston Martin, for example. I think the head to heads are very, very similar, and uh, the average is. Uh, as well, Hulkenberg uh, being managed in every single aspect. Yep, now, uh, and the closest is like the sprint race finish. Uh, that's still like 2.3, uh, 2.3 average qualifying. Oh, uh, sorry, race finishing position yeah. gap. Yep, no, not good for Magnus and Bottas on Joe. Um, this this had to had to look very very close after the first twelve races, but it seemed like Bottas is getting the upper hand here in the later part of the season, uh, winning especially in qualifying head to heads. The race head to heads are much closer, but still in favor of Bottas. Uh, racing bulls, yeah, Ricardo winning the qualifying head to head, but having the worst qualifying <laughs> average qualifying position is interesting. Uh, I would say this kind of equals out to particularly them being very equal in qualifying in the races. Uh, it's 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 been a similar story, except that Snowda is still uh, having the better statistics, especially thanks to those uh, early season heroics that he did in that car. Not heroics pretty much. It was a very good car, so you couldn't say it's heroics, but very good drives. Um, you could say that. Um, well, very close. Uh, Ricardo closed the gap, but unfortunately now that the car is not as good as it's been in the start of the season. Uh, it could, it would only be a miracle if Ricardo could close the gap to some of the end points. Uh, Albon and Sargent. Um, in qualifying, uh, it, it's not a whitewash. Sargent has been able to qualify Albon at times, but still, especially in the average qualifying position. Uh, whenever, whenever Sargent beats Albon, it's by a position or two, and whenever Albon beats Sargent, it could be like eighth position sometimes. So Sartre needs to iron out those uh, consistency issues so he can pretty much al- match Albon here. And the, and the race at heads is much, much closer, but still, uh, it, 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 it's impressive that it's that close. Uh, one, it's actually 0.7 average race finish, for example, the gap, and 10 to 2 for Albon in the race at heads. That's, that's very good uh, for Sargent, but still be, being beaten by Albon. In the second season, especially that hard but in qualifying is is not good for his future. What well, would not be um, obviously I'm going to simulate 2025 until this season. Uh, the in real life ends. So yeah, uh, that's it for the head to heads. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. And uh, this video should be the first one that comes out today. I think I'm going to put out the U.S. Grand Prix sprint race and. It's basically the entire weekend today, later today as well. So make sure to check that one out as well. Yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, comment down below when you want to see my foreign content. And until next time, see ya.